Okay, the next step in our project is to create a uh, nested animation. So we're going to create animation within a symbol. So the first thing we made was a, a star and we created a classic tween. Uh, but if we went into the symbol itself, the star, and had a look, there wasn't anything but a really basic uh, bit of work that I created in 10 seconds, not even that, with the brush. So that's all we have inside that. Um, so nesting is a very amazingly um, clever thing to be able to do for you with your animation and it saves a lot, of, uh, mainly because it's saving a lot of time. And um, I might uh, leave our little star up here in the library I was deleted off the stage, we'll, we'll probably use that some stage down the track. And um, we're just going to make a uh, basic rocket ship. So a blank frame and I'm just going to uh, change that. So our rocket ship is just going to be uh, pretty simple. and. It's uh, going to have everything a rocket ship needs. Some uh, a little port for the astronaut to look out of, and and so a spot for the uh, jet, to, a nozzle for the jet to come out of. And, and um, not many details here, but we'll just. Um, it's mainly the theory that we're concerned with here, and you can do the creative stuff. So. Um, what we need to do is uh, we need to, first of all, when we do our work, we just select it and create a symbol by going function F8 and we'll name that rocket whatever you'd like to and it's a graphic symbol all right? and it's added to our library. We've got a star and a rocket now. So if I go into a rocket as was the same case with the star there's not much going on just one layer of paint actually I didn't show you there's a sub selection arrow here and that allows me to get in and manipulate these areas of fill so you could do a bit of tweaking if you really wanted to um, if you hold the arrow key nearby that lets you do the same thing but we'll just We'll just forget about that. And um, so we've got a symbol and we're inside the symbol, we're editing the symbol. So what we're going to do is inside the symbol, we're going to create some flames coming out of the rocket. And that's going to be on another layer. So this first layer you can call the body, the rocket ship. And it might be a good idea to actually fill the body of the rocket ship, make it a really light yellow. And so fill that with a color as well. And just, you know, we go and uh, we'll change all this stuff down the track if we want to. And underneath the body of the rocket ship, we're going to make some flames. So just add a new layer underneath it. And I'm going to lock that body layer. And I'm just going to create some really simple flames and they you know we're not going to get too technical here we're just going to make orange flames and they're going to come out of the rocket and we'll just make five frames so if I go function f6 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 function f6 we'll make five frames and that's extended uh, the body to five frames and it's also given us the five blank frames so the first blank frame and I'll just you know there's going to be some flames sort of hanging around out here that already were shot out. And I'm going to turn on onion skinning. And onion skinning lets me look at what I've drawn uh, a frame behind or two frames behind. I can drag out these little these little viewer items here. And when I'm scrub, scrubbing backwards and forwards on the timeline, let me see what I've done in the previous frame or wherever I've drawn anything. So now I can add 
uh, my flames and just really quickly animate them so they can shoot out and go whizzing around all over the place and this is fun because this is a bit of experimentation with animation and we'll just you know, they, they kind of die off as they move out so you can add some more for flames here and the same things going to happen with them they're going to kind of shoot out and then by the time they get back here it's going to go on a loop so by the time they get back here they're going to be out here all right and then you can color them in maybe not a lighter color and use that Close medium gaps or large gaps. I want to be closed. Oh, that'll help. And so just color them in however you like and get that done. So some basic flames coming out of our rocket. I'll turn onion skinning off. So we're inside the rocket, we're editing the rocket, and we've got some flames coming out of our rocket. Now, if I move back out to the scene, I've got a rocket, and and I want to animate it and move it, and get it to go slowly from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen, then I can just do my classic tween. I can just have it slowly moving up so what I'll do is I'll just start it here, I'll go function F5 and I'll make some extra frames and let this go for, say this goes for about two seconds, 50 frames roughly. And the last frame, I'll just go function F6, make a keyframe and our rocket will be here. I'll go right mouse click on the timeline, create a classic tween. So now we've got a rocket and it's slowly moving up. Okay, now you can go in and animate that at any time. You can go to this graphic symbol of the rocket and go in there and change all of this. It would make sense to add a background behind the rocket and so I'll add a new layer, call it BG move it behind the rocket because underneath is behind makes sense and we'll fill it with a color I might just fill it with a, a radial gradient blue to black and to use the bucket tool I've actually got to fill in some space that I've defined with some lines so I'll just define a rectangle very bad rectangle and I'll fill it with that. So there's my sort of space and um, I can lock that and so now my rocket is blasting through space and I can have my stars that we created slowly drifting by um, on another layer. So I could add another layer, call that the star layer and I'll lock the, I tend to lock other layers just to make it less of a problem uh, with accidentally grabbing or moving things to the wrong layer and I'll change, I'll free transform this star here and the star can um, now my star um, I can actually I could, I could create inside my star I could create some um, motion tweens or I could tween it inside it uh, you know make it animate inside itself and that would save a lot of time in this case so and that would be a, another example of nesting so um, that would be helpful um, but I'd have to call it something else I'd have to you know I'd have to select this and call it and go function f8 
and call this star um, star star one nest something like that. So this is this is a little part of the star. So it's inside the star. Inside star, I've got this thing called star one nest, and star one nest is actually going to move from here to here. So I'll make a I'll go function f function f six, and I'll make a and I'll create a classic tween, and I'll make it so make it move down here. And I'll drag this so it takes a little bit longer. So now inside star, it has some nested animation as well. So out on the scene, if I play it, uh, the star is uh, going to be moving. And a bit of a problem here, we've got 50 frames, but inside the star itself, if I look at the animation, we've only got 40 frames. So it only plays the first 40 frames or the frames available for the, for the graphic symbol, and then it goes back to the first frame, it jumps back to the first frame. So to solve this problem, we could either just drag this out and make this play for 50 frames, uh, would be the solution I'd say. And so if I grab a few frames and go function F5, that covers it. And if I go back out into the scene, the star drifts by slowly. So I could grab a few more stars and just um, because star now has that animation inside it and if I play it here up on the timeline it, it gives me a little preview of the animation um, if I hit the play button um, if I drag that out onto that layer I could scale it and I could have quite a few of them I'll just scale them down so I could have some really small ones um, and I could have some larger ones and they'll all animate um, and they're all behind my rocket. Let's get one more. Oh, one more star. Oops, make sure I'm on the right layer. Star. There we go. So now when I play, I've got all these little stars moving around and they seem to work quite well. They, uh, they're not great, but they're, they're doing the trick. So there you go. So we've got a rocket going through space and we've got nested animation, both within the star and within the rocket. And here, a reminder again, if I click on the rocket, here's my rocket, which is a graphic symbol called rocket. It has some animation inside it. If I double click it, I can see I'm in the rocket and I'm looking at my animation and I can go back now and do my fine tuning and uh, you know, add, make these flames look a little bit better, maybe get them to play over 10 frames and um, take some time to make them look better. Now, if I hit command return and animate that, that's what we have, a rocket in space.